Today's video is sponsored by Squarespace. If you're a photographer and you need to build a website, there's no better tool than Squarespace. And right now, if you wanna check out Squarespace and give it a shot, you can actually get 10% off your first purchase if you go to the link in the description and use the promo code MATTDAY. For the last couple of months, as I've been shooting with the Leica M262, the most requested video has been a video on how I edit my black and white photos. And it's nothing really crazy, it's pretty straightforward, but since so many of you have asked for it, I figured I would go ahead and just pick a few photos, do some black and white edits, and show you guys the whole process. So I just grabbed uh, eight different photos here. I tried to grab a good variety of different kinds of light, different kinds of situations, and what I was going for when I shot the image. So all these photos, they're all shot with the Leica M262. Um, I think all but just one image, they were all shot at ISO 1600, so you guys can kind of get a feel for how that camera shoots at ISO 1600. Being a film shooter, I'm used to shooting my HP5 pushed to 1600 and my M6, so I pretty much treat this camera the same way. So I just leave it at 1600, I stop down the lens all the time, and uh, yeah, that's just what we're gonna be working with today. So the first image here is a photo that I shot uh, downtown in Chillicothe, and the very first thing I would do is I would go over here to my uh, develop module and I would open up the Maston Ilford Lab uh, presets. Now they make these for, you know, I think Fuji, Canon, and Nikon. Those are the three profiles they work with. For the Leica profile, it's, you know, it doesn't exist, but for my Leica files, it, it works just fine. I think it works well with black and white, Color might be a different story, but uh, this is just a starting point. Now, I could start from scratch, but the reason I like using the Maston Labs uh, film packs is because being a film shooter, I want things to have somewhat of a, co a consistent kind of look. So for me, this is a really great starting point. I don't think that using any kind of you know preset pack or anything like that should be just a one click and then you're done. Um, but for me, I use these as a starting point. So I don't think there's anything you can apply and that's it. I like to start off with HP5 and 35 millimeter because that's what I shoot. Um, so this is always just my starting point. I go to uh, the HP5 35 millimeter. Um, sometimes I'll do lens correction on if I'm shooting with my Nikon camera, um, but I never mess with it with the Leica lenses. I don't think they're uh, set up really well in Lightroom, so I just leave it at uh, you know as is, and then I can just go ahead and close this all together, and I don't have to worry about that. So very first thing I would do, um, again, this isn't really about black and white. I would kind of straighten this out just a little bit. That's it, not a big deal. Um, but the first thing I go for is basically, you know, what I was looking at whenever I shot that image. Uh, for this particular one, obviously what I was focusing on was uh, the lines in the composition of the shadows on the building. Uh, you know, there's a lot of lines on the side of this building and then the shadows there as well. I just like the way this looks. So for me to put the emphasis on that, I want a lot of contrast. Typically, I have a lot of contrast anyway whenever I'm shooting black and white film. Um, and, you know, for any of these photos as I'm editing, it's going to be the same process if I was dealing with a film scan. I just worry about the contrast, the overall exposure, and I try to get things where I want them. Uh, so whether it's a digital or a film file, it doesn't really matter. I'm doing the same kind of process. But for these, we're going to be working with the M262 files. Uh, so the first thing I'm going to do is uh, I think the exposure is fine where it's at but I'm gonna go ahead and go over here and adjust the blacks. So I turned on the J key so it'll show me when things start to clip, where I start to lose detail. So you can see right here as the blue is starting to creep in, that means you know that's pure black, so there is no detail there. And for something like this, I want that high contrast kind of look. Uh, but right there, I think that's good for my blacks, but the whites, I really wanna have some true white value in there. So I'm gonna go ahead and bring the whites up and I don't necessarily need it to like blow out and be 100% white, but I do want a lot of contrast. So right there, that's done. I don't have to mess with anything else. If I wanted to do anything else, maybe I would kind of pull the highlights down just to keep a little bit more detail, but honestly, the vast majority of what I do here, you're gonna see, is all just messing with the whites and blacks after I add the HP5 preset. That's it. Uh, you know, it's just, it's a really simple kind of workflow for me. I try to keep things as simple as possible. And I try to just keep this kind of stuff in mind when I'm shooting. That way, whenever I go to, you know, edit anything, I already have the look in mind. And, uh, you know, just kind of treat it as if I were shooting film, basically. Uh, so the next image, again, another one, the first thing I would do is I would open this up. 
select HP5 and 35 millimeter, and there we go. This particular image I actually thought about leaving in color because I liked the way that uh, the sky and the, the yellow bus, but I'm not much of a color guy and uh, I'm gonna stick with black and white here. Uh, first thing I would do, again, kind of straighten this a little bit, just a tiny, tiny bit. Yeah, 0.6, there we go, that's a little bit better. And uh, again, turn on the J key to show the, the clipping. Kind of bring the shadows, blacks down just a little bit. Let's see, right about there, bring the whites up. Don't want to lose too much, just a little bit right there in the clouds. And there we go. That works for me, that's done. Um, again, you know, I was kind of exposing for the highlights whenever I shot this. Typically with any kind of digital file, I usually expose for the highlights just because it's a lot easier to bring up shadow detail than it is to bring down highlight detail. Uh, for a lot of digital cameras, if you blow the highlights, uh, it's pretty hard to get those back. So uh, yeah, that's just kind of how I shoot that. So a little before and after you can see here, I actually shot this as I was approaching this light in my car, um, which is why up here in the top right, you can see this here, that's part of the, the dash. Uh, I always have the camera in my lap or around my neck, even when I'm driving and I just leave it on, or you know, if I'm shooting film, I make sure the film has already been advanced. And uh, I just kind of always have it with me. And um, so this one, that's why you can see part of the dash in there, I actually shot this as I was approaching the, the light there, but um, you know, I was pretty happy with this image. It's nothing groundbreaking or anything, but it was one I got lucky with. Uh, this next image, uh, this is a shot from a recent video I did where I talked about shutter speeds and flash. So this is a photo of my wife, Molly. And for this one here, same thing. I know it's getting repetitive, but you guys asked for it. Uh, same thing, I add the preset, I bring my whites up, to where they're looking good, especially her white t-shirt and in her eyes. I want those to really kind of pop. And I bring the blacks down and that's it. That photo is done. Quick before and after, simple. Uh, this next one here, this is actually directly across the road from our driveway. Uh, the horses over here on this farm, I just noticed them out there uh, whenever we had some uh, really nice fog in the morning. And um, first thing I'm gonna do you guessed it, HP5. And for this one, I'm gonna bring the exposure down because it's kind of hard to see them. And I like the way I placed the 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 horse kind of in, in between those branches. I wanted it to be kind of like a, a hidden kind of thing. You had to kind of be looking for it to really see it. But, um, you know, I wanna make sure it stands out really well. And I was wanting a really high contrast kind of thing, uh, kind of look. So I'm gonna go ahead and bring the blacks down first and the branches and the trees and everything, if I lose detail there, that's okay. Um, you know, it's not really important to this right now. Um, but I'm gonna bring the whites up. And again, I want that to really kind of stand out there. And that to me is pretty much good. So I brought the exposure down almost a full stop and then just really brought in the contrast. I might bring up the clarity, like, you know, plus 10 at the most. Clarity is something that is easily overdone, um, but I think just to add a little bit more punch and definition in there, um, yeah, that's pretty good for me. And if I was being really particular, I might crop it in just a tiny, tiny bit. Nothing dramatic, but um, I shot this with a 50 millimeter, so that can kind of give you an idea as to you know how far it was across the road. Maybe bring that out, this tiny little line right here. I don't like that in the frame there. Yeah, so if I was gonna crop it in a little bit, maybe just a tiny bit there, but try not to crop too much. Um, next image here, this one I shot in our backyard. I just liked the way the line uh, on the shadow right here, I tried to line it up perfectly with the shadow on our neighbor's house. And um, again, for something like this, to really kind of focus on just that contrast and those lines there, I would start off with the HP5 and then I'm just gonna really kind of crunch the blacks and really bring up the whites and uh, just go for that really, really high contrast kind of look. And if I'm, you know, shooting black and white film, especially uh, push to 1600 in the middle of the day in bright, harsh sunlight like this, you know, I'm, I'm definitely gonna have some contrast there. Might bring the exposure down just a little bit and really just focus on the highlights and the whites to bring those up. And then for this one here, probably adjust it a little bit, straighten, crop it in just a tiny bit tighter. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it for that one as well. 
Uh, next image, same thing. This is my brother's dog, Ellie, and uh, there a little bit of sunlight. It was kind of late in the day. As it was coming through, I was seeing all these stripes on her off of the, uh, the fence there. So, same thing. HP5. <laughs> grab the whites and grab the blacks and just really add that contrast in there. Um, this is the kind of thing that I look for when I'm shooting and you know it, it might not be as apparent as I'm shooting right there with a digital sensor you know a modern digital sensor <clears throat> or even you know some kind of you know pro grade film you're gonna have a ton of detail and initially it's gonna be pretty flat you know a lot of film scans come out pretty flat and you kinda have to tweak things from there and you know digital and film for me it's no different uh, I have the kind of look I have in mind when I'm shooting it knowing that the final step isn't whenever I take the photo There is going to be work to do afterwards whether it's film or digital. This is all just a part of the process um, So yeah, just to really add that contrast there to show off the lines on her from the shadows and the fence that to me is pretty good uh, another photo here of Nora this was outside in uh, my mom's backyard and you can see she was just uh, she was all about checking out the light on the, the, what are they called? Like the security lights that automatically come on. And uh, I was just having fun, kind of watching her run around in there. And I was trying to get this kind of weird look where, you know, everything was really dark and she was just kind of standing in this spotlight. And she just happened to look over and give me this kind of funny look. And uh, yeah, I just really liked that one. So again, you can see, really, really simple. Grab the blacks, grab the whites, really kind of just fine tune the contrast, and that's it. Uh, it's it's crazy, crazy simple. Um, again, another one here, Molly and Elliot sitting on the couch, and I just really liked the highlights that was kind of just, uh, you know, just barely, just kind of showing the, the form of them, um, you know, just the, the kind of like a silhouette kind of shot there. So really bring the whites up here. I don't mind losing the detail in the door and the window there. That's no big deal. And bringing the blacks down to really lose detail there, that's okay with me. I want a really contrasty look because that's what I was going for. I just was looking at the darks and the lights and, you know, that's pretty much it. So those are, you know, eight images that I just edited that quick. And it's just because it's really consistent all across the board. I try to just add a good amount of contrast. I have the HP5 look that I like that comes with the Mastin Labs, and that's really it. So as you guys can tell, this was nothing groundbreaking or difficult to do. It's just a matter of having the look in mind that you want uh, whenever you shoot the photo. I think that helps you find the photo in general, but also whenever you sit down to edit, uh, whether it's digital or film, it, it speeds things up a lot. So for me with my digital files, I start off with the HP5 from Mastin Labs. I think that's a great starting point. It kind of helps me feel like I have just a a scan straight out of the scanner and then from there I just adjust my contrast like I would my film scan so really really simple stuff I think it's just a matter of having that look in mind whenever you're shooting and whenever you sit down to edit you already know exactly what you want to do and it kind of helps things uh, stay consistent that way as well I've I've you know basically tweaked the contrast of the HP5 preset and then saved my own custom one afterwards and I use that all the time as my starting point because that's just about done right out of the box. Uh, you know, I was going through the whole process here, which wasn't big, but I was doing that just for the sake of demonstration. But I basically saved what I just done here for you guys, and uh, I basically just select all, add it, and then kind of give it one last briefing and see if anything else needs tweaked. But it's really, really simple stuff. So if you guys have any questions at all, please just let me know in the comments. Uh, I hope it was helpful, even as simple as it was. But you know, this was something that's been requested over and over. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this. So thank you guys as always for watching and I'll see you guys next time.